Okay, well, um, welcome back to our third video on logs. And what I'm going to do in this video is just quickly introduce you to the log laws um, and what they are, and maybe we'll do a, a couple of simple examples of them um, just to show you that they work. And then once we've done the log laws, um, I'm going to prove one of them and then we'll move on. And you'll be coming into class to do a lot more examples and look in more detail, but hopefully you've got that grounding. Um, but again, this will be quite conversational, so we'll just have a chat through them. So I'm just going to run through and, and write down the log laws first of all. And it's, it's an arbitrary order, so it depends where you look. They might call them law 1, law 2, etc. I won't give them a name. I'll just write them down. The first law is log base A of 1 is equal to 0, no matter what A is. And we talked about this briefly in the last video. So A to the power of 0 always equals 1. And the second law is quite similar. Log base A of A is equal to 1. A to the power of 1 always equals itself. So there's our first two log laws, and they're pretty connected. The next one's a little bit more interesting. And the first one is log base A of M plus log base A of N is equal to log base A of MN. And this is actually the one I'm going to prove a little bit later on. To remember these log laws, and they are on your formula sheet for the QCAA Math Methods course, but to remember these log laws, um, one, one way to think about it is that they are opposite to um, the index laws. So in the index laws, if you multiply two indices, you add them. In log laws, if you add two indices, or if you multiply two indices, sorry, you add the powers. In log laws, if you add two logs, you multiply the bits inside the logs. And the proof will show you why that happens. But for now, that's the log law. We get a very equivalent log law, which is the same, but we subtract. And that gives us log base A of M over N, which you probably guessed. Uh, we have this log law as well, of M to the power of P is equal to P times log base A of M. So this law is actually kind of um, anecdotally stated as if you bring the P, if you've got a P and a power inside a log, you can bring that P out the front. Um, and again, you'll see this links pretty directly to one of the index laws. Um, and this law has a bit of a flip side, a very specific um, law, but that is that if you have log base A of 1 over M, well, that can be written as log base A of M to the negative 1, so that actually equals negative log base A of M. Um, so either or you can flip that over. Um, and then make it a negative log. That's a really interesting result as well. What I'm going to do is just quickly prove this third log law. And I'm going to prove it by starting with the left-hand side. So when I say I'm starting with the left-hand side, I'm starting over here and showing that that's equal to the right-hand side by first defining that x is equal to log base a of m and that y is equal to log base a of n. So I've just defined x and y which means I've now got A, M, N, X, and Y, and I know that's a lot, but we'll get there. Now, if I rearrange these into exponential form, I get A to the power of X equals M, and A to the power of Y equals N. And both of these have um, the same base, which is base A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these equations, but I'm going to multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand sides. If they're equal, which is what this equivalent statement here, the equal sign, states, well, then it shouldn't matter if... Um, I multiply them, and a to the power of x times a to the power of y should be equal to mn. Um, and so therefore, a to the power of x times a to the power of y equals mm, which is a to the power of x plus y, which equals mn. And if I rearrange this into log form, I get x plus y is equal to log base a of mn. Pause it now if you want to have a look and just confirm that that rearrangement makes sense in our log understanding. And we know something about x and y. We know x is equal to this, and we know that y is equal to this. So I can write this down now as log base a of m, which is our x, plus log base a of n, which is our y, equals log base a of m n. And would you believe it? we now have that log law. So we developed it just from these two definitions here. We developed the log law. 
And to do that, we used this index law. So if you wanted to develop the next log law down, you would use the same process, except you wouldn't use the multiplication index law, you'd use the division index law and so on and so forth. Um, so expect to see that. If you wanted to, you could have a read through the textbook. It's got those examples, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, so without further ado, I'm probably just going to um, actually leave it there. We'll do some examples in class. You've got plenty of examples in the textbook to have a read through. Um, I just wanted to introduce you to all that uh, the stuff there. Um, logs, it's a pretty abstract idea. It's a new idea. You haven't seen it before necessarily. And it is pretty abstract. Um, so when you're looking at a log, it's really hard to really link it back to where it comes from and why it comes from there. But if you spend time doing the questions in the first instance, and as you get comfortable with the questions, you start to ask yourself questions like why, where's this happening, how does it apply? And asking those questions of me and your peers, you'll get a deeper understanding, and that deeper understanding will come with a long-term understanding and, and good knowledge retention. So the point here is that once you learn it in class, get in, get the exercise done, have the conversations, ask the questions, ponder, consider why, and you'll find that you really embed a good knowledge of logs, and that's going to help you for the next couple of years of your math lives. Anyway, thanks for watching. All the best.